You are looking at England's newest town. Today marks its first anniversary. Renowned not only for its architectural beauty, its inhabitants claim that they are better housed, healthier and happier than any other people on the face of the globe. Today they pay tribute to the man who is responsible for this unique social phenomenon. In the town's spacious central square, a statue is being unveiled to its founder and benefactor. by this magnificent statue that is here to grace your square, but also by the presence of the man himself. <laughs> Let us then give thanks that he is with us here today. <laughs> no, my friend, not by tears, but by giving thought. Let us think of the great moral lesson we can learn from this man's life. I was privileged to know him long before he came to your town. I knew him in less happy circumstances. For he, for he, for he is a man who has known hardship and suffering in the past. Often in his youth, cast adrift in a harsh world to make his way at an age when most youngsters are still at their school desks. Davy Cooper met the challenge of life resolutely and unflinchingly. Come back with me through the years to a cold winter's night when the tide of Davy Cooper's fortune had reached a low end. <laughs> boy. Thank you very much. Number six, flight four. Taxi! Taxi! Hey, 
you are. Oh, I'm so sorry. Are you here? Uh, that's yours. That's your taxi. Yeah, but I'm going to insist. Go in the room. Fair, sir. I don't want one. Where to, Mike? This will do here. What a frog. There! You only moved a couple of yards. Not a province. I've only got threepence. Let's have it then. Now wait that other shilling. Hey, you free? Well, I'll finish with this lie about, Gav. David Cooper! Ha! Huh. Danny. Danny! Huh. I haven't seen you since, sir. Where's the other shilling? Hey, you have a spot of trouble. He wants to charge me and I haven't moved. Oh, I'll look after it. Hey, Tripoli! That's where it was. Tripoli! Seventeenth Caledonians, wasn't it? Well, those are the days, eh, Davy? Well, how you been, boy? Things are a bit slow. Looks like you're doing all right. Well, can't complain. Wait a minute. What sort of a job are you doing? There it is. Bit of this, bit of that, you know. And you? Well, cheer up, Davy. You never know what'll happen tomorrow. Hey, hop in. I'll give you a lift. Well, come on. <laughs> Ready for your second helping, dear? No, please, thanks, Mum. Take your time. Thank you. Do you like it? <clears throat> you work late, don't you? Mostly night. So, seeing as how the Dutchman here is incapacitated, I reckon that Davy's experience in this particular field might be of some use. Indeed, a most fortunate encounter. He's flat broke, Governor, ready for anything. You'll do anything, won't you, Davy boy? That's what you said, didn't you? Well, let's hope he's a little more expert with explosives than old Butterfingers here. Anyone can make a mistake. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, Mr. Cooper, if you could spare a moment, please. Oh, no, 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 carry on, I quite understand. You sure you don't mind? Not a bit. Only because, you know, well, it's a pity to waste good food. Of course, of course. <laughs> Uh, Dan here tells me you were with the commanders. Yeah. Quite an expert at blowing things up. Now, what sort of things? Well, all sorts. Submarine depots, ammunition dumps, bridges. People? Any references? Excellent. Excellent. Well, there's no doubt you're highly qualified. Of course, in our profession, a particularly delicate touch is required. Just need a chance, that's all. I'll show you what I can do. And you're fully aware of the nature of the services we require of you. Now, don't you worry about me, Governor. I can blow anything up. You just name it. Good. Right. Let's get down to business, shall we? We'll be more comfortable in here, Mr. Cooper. Or may I call you Davy? Oh, it's a pleasure. Good. There's the interior of the building. That's the exterior of the building. But I think you'll get a clearer picture of the layout from this ground plan here. Oh, I like working from a blueprint. Evening. Excellent. So do I. It avoids the possibility of error. Oh, yeah. We don't want to blow up the place next door, do we? Have the police after us. The what? The police. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's <laughs> got a nice sense of humour. <laughs> we have work to do. Now, there's Bond Street, Conduit Street, right? That's the rear alley. That's a corridor leading to the showroom there. That's a door to the manager's office. Desk, filing cabinet, and there in the corner is the safe. Yeah, it's a Burlington safe manufactured in 1947 with a triple tumbler combination lock. Safe. Crooks. You want me to join a bunch of crooks? What did you think you were joining? The Boy Scouts? Didn't you explain it to him? Well, they're not exactly, Governor, but he said he'd do anything. Look, you said you'd do anything, providing it's honest. I'm not turning crook for anyone. What do you think you're doing? Darling, 999, that is what? What are you waiting for? There's no charge. My friend, eh? Dan, put that thing away. Ah, <laughs> oh, Davy, why are you so upset? 
You're trying to make a crook out of me, and you're asking me why I'm upset. A crook? Me? Now, what's wrong with being a crook? What's wrong with it? It's just wrong. You're taking things that don't belong to you. Well, what harm does that do? What about the poor jeweler you're planning to rob? We're doing him a good turn. He'll collect the insurance and make himself a stack. What about the poor insurance company, then? Did you ever hear of a poor insurance company? <laughs> of course not. They're always boasting of their assets, aren't they? Little wonder. They've been collecting premiums for years. It's time they paid up for a change. It's not right. Oh, Davy, listen to me. Oh, Davy, I, I want you to think of that young policeman who's going to answer that call if you make it. Now, he's probably married and got two kids, right? Well, if it weren't for crime, he'd be out of work, wouldn't he? And thousands more like him. Do you realize there are 40,000 policemen in London alone? But, but do you want to see them all starving? And what about the solicitors, barristers, judges, hundreds and hundreds of them? Well, what about them? Well, they wouldn't be needed if it wasn't for crime and the prisons. Well? Well, no warders, no probation officers. <laughs> I tell you, Davy boy, if it weren't for a small, almost insignificant handful of crooks, there'd be mass unemployment, demonstrations. Well, they'd, they'd be marching on Downing Street with flat cards saying, bring back crime, England needs crooks. Oh, I never thought of it that way before. Well, then it's time you did, isn't it? <laughs> Seems like it. Davy, my boy, I predict a great future for you if you'll throw your lot in with us. Now, I've always had brilliant plans, but what I've needed is somebody with your skill to execute them. Well, now, look, I don't want to put the undue pressure on you, but you must admit you do know a little too much about us. However, the decision is up to you. But I'd be very grateful if you'd make up your mind as quickly as possible, please, because we've got to be at this particular little job of ours by 9.30 this evening. Now, now, what's it going to be? The police? And the rather sticky end to what might have been a very profitable career? Or... Synchronize your watches, haven't you? And yours? I haven't got one. You will have. It's a jeweler's. <laughs> <laughs> gentlemen, to put into operation our most ambitious plans so far. At the risk of sounding immodest, I must say, the daring and ingenuity of this plan staggers the imagination. When I first conceived it, I believed it was impossible to carry out successfully. However, I'm the kind of man who finds the impossible an irresistible challenge. Yeah, yeah. And since our friend Davy here joined us... Davy, do you mind? Since David joined our organization, I've become convinced that the extremely difficult problems involved in executing this plan can be solved thanks to his skill. And the operation will net us a clear profit of 200,000 pounds. I'm rich! I'm rich! <laughs> we'll all be rich. <laughs> no, no, I don't mean that. I want a third dividend. Four pound eight and nine pence for tuppence. 
Four pounds, eight and ninepence. There's 200,000 pounds involved here. But this is honest. I got it the hard way. No, you wouldn't understand. All right, I'm with you. Thank you. I've broken down the overall plan into minute detail. Davy, would you be good enough to elaborate? That is, if I'm not putting you to too much trouble, old boy. Certainly, old boy. In fact, I deem it a privilege. Now then, gentlemen, if you would be so good as to turn, in order that you may observe the screen here, Now, this is... <laughs> Adolf. Gentlemen, our objective, the National Merchandising Bank Limited. Now, next to the bank... Okay. Next to the bank, St. Michael's Hospital. Now, of course, your problem has always been how to get into the bank vault undetected. Simple. Sister, I'm expecting an emergency. That must be it now. Thank you, sister. Operating here to be immediately. I don't seem to have any record. What a record mm. matter when a man's life is at stake. Operating here to be immediately. Do you understand, sister? Yes, sir. I, I, I'm sorry, sir.
How dare you come in here, sister? Don't you know we're all sterile? I'm very sorry, sir. I didn't realize. There was... But uh, uh, Theta B is in use. Uh, well, it's um, it's an emergency of some kind. <laughs> I um, I don't seem to have a record of it. Yes, sir. I I'll look into it at once. <laughs> Porter's desk here. Casualty sister speaking. Will you call the police at once? There's something very strange going on in Theater B. Mr. Porter's police. St. Michael's Hospital. Suspicious persons reported operating Theater B. Very good, sir. Get that up, though.
We shall never be able to spend all this lot. <laughs> oh, I think I'm going to be ill. Take me to hospital, will you? Mr. Green, now what do you think you're doing? We're in the governor's garden. It's Tuesday, you know, digging. <laughs> well, and how many times do I have to tell you you're supposed to wait until I come and let you out? But it's gone nine o'clock. I'm late. I hope I slept. That's no excuse. Look, we can't have prisoners letting themselves out of their cells. I didn't want to trouble you, Mr. Green. It's no trouble. It's my job. I've got to protect myself. Suppose you took it into your head to escape. Oh, Mr. Green, now don't be daft. I've been here for five years. I don't want to escape. I wouldn't put that there. But you can't go wandering in and out of your cell as if you were at home. But this is my home. This is the only real home I've ever known, Mr. Green. But you've got to follow regulations. Now, go on. Get back in your cell. Please. Hey, what about the governor's garden? Look! You get back in and I'll let you out. Can it come out now? No! Shut that door properly! Isn't it marvellous? Now, ask permission according to regulations. Cool. Prisoner 3709935 requests permission to leave for special duties in the governor's garden. Permission granted. What are you doing? I, I can't get it open. Well, of course not. It's bolted on the inside. It's what? It's bolted. I put it on last week. I've got to have a bit of privacy and I... Red tape. Come on, Fred. Hi, Bert. There he is, Padre. Thank you, Water. The governor wants to see him. He gets out next week, doesn't he? Yes, but he doesn't know it yet. I'm just about to tell him. This is one of the very few gratifying moments in my work. Davy? 
Morning, Padre. Enjoying yourself? Oh, this is the life. Aren't they lovely? Yes, Davy. God's works are wonderful. I beg your pardon, sir. I did these. Oh, Davy. Go, Bob. Report to the governor as soon as the chaplain's finished with you. Governor? What do I want to see the governor for? I've got no complaints. But don't you find prison a punishment? Oh, no, sir. No, it's peaceful and cosy. Decent lot of fellas. No worries, no responsibilities. It's like being retired. You really do like it here, don't you, Davy? You'll excuse me saying this to you, sir, but, well, heaven must be like this. I should have thought it was more like the other place. You're joking. Yes, of course. Hardly a subject to joke about, sir. Davy, what are you going to do when you take your discharge? Oh, um, that's a long way off yet, sir. You ought to be thinking of it. <laughs> I try not to, sir. But you have to face up to it. Break clean away from the life you've been living outside and go straight. Ah, oh, don't worry about me, sir. I've learned my lesson. Straight and narrow is the only way. You mark my words. Oh, yes, yes, I quite agree. And I'm so glad you feel that way because I've arranged a job for you when you leave here. Well, that's very kind of you, sir, but, well, we can talk about that when the time comes, eh? The time has come. Congratulations, my dear fellow. You've got 24 months remission. For good conduct. They're not going to put me out of here. Yes. Now, you'd better run along and see the governor. But they can't do this to me. What do you mean? Well, I'm getting on marvellous here. My little garden's coming on fine. And if I go, who's going to give out the hymn sheets in chapel? The books in the library, I can't go. My dear man, don't be silly. I'm not going. They can forget it. But everybody wants to get out of prison. Not me. The judge gave me seven years. I'm going to have seven years. With all due respect to you, sir. Oh, Davy. I've got my rights. I'm a citizen. Call this British justice. But that's just what you're getting, don't you see? The governor is showing his appreciation of your good conduct. Fine way he's got to show it good conduct. I'll finish with that luck. After the way I slaved in his garden for five years and now... <coughs> oh, I'll show him good conduct. Oh, no. Come back here. Oh, no. oh you're so bad. Be reasonable. At last you are free. Please, can't I just stay for six months more? Come along and see the governor. Well, three months. Come along. There we are. In we go. Now the other one. At least I'm entitled to two weeks' notice. No, Davy. We've been over all this. It's your moral duty to take your place in society and contribute to the common good. There's your railway ticket to sleep. And here's your letter of introduction. You have to report to the personnel department of MacKillop and Company. Oh, Davy. Your heart should be overflowing with gratitude at this golden opportunity to start life anew. Already? We must hurry or you'll miss your train, won't you? Come along, Davy. Hello, Davy boy. Adolf. That's right, Davy. You didn't think we'd forget our old chum now, did you? Well, it's taken you five years to remember. I don't blame you for being bitter. But it wasn't our fault you got caught and we got away now, was it? Just the luck of the game. Of course it was. Let bygones be bygones. Come on, hop in. No thanks, Adolf. It's not part of the station. But you're coming back to London with us. Come on, we'll fix you up with some new clothes and do a little celebrating. No. I've got a job to do up north. Where? Little place called Sleep. Is it a safe job? <laughs> Recommended by the chaplain. Do you mean the chaplain's one of us? No. I'm going straight, Adolf. Don't be a mug, Davy. What good will that do, slaving away for seven quid a week? Come on! No. We can make a fortune together. Just a couple of months' work, then you can retire and spend the rest of your life in the lap of luxury. No, no! You could go anywhere. Bermuda, South America, Italy. 
Once and for all, no. I promised Mr. Hotchkiss. I'm sticking to the straight and narrow. Davy! Oh, let him go. But we need him. We'll get him. I'll give him just 48 hours to get over that straight and narrow nonsense. Right, let's go. Morning. Oh, can I leave this here, please? You'd better pick it up by seven. Last train leaves at seven five. Oh, I'm not leaving. I'm going to live here. In Slaith. I've got a job at the mill. Start today. You're going to work for McKillop. How did you know? Everyone works for McKillop. Don't do it. Take my advice. Get back on that train and go. Go where? Anywhere except Slaith. No. Go on, Harry, you can still make it. No. Oh. <laughs> well, you can't say I didn't warn you. Thank you. Got a letter here about a job. You're Cooper then? Yeah, I'm from the. Uh... Yes, I know. We'll start tomorrow. Johnny, Mr. Cooper's starting tomorrow. Fix him up with some working clothes. You'll be working number one shop. Uh, thank you, Miss. Um... Foster. Foster. All right, come on. I'd like a room, please. I order. Well, it's just uh, till I find some digs. Luggage? Oh, oh, I left it at the station. Oh, it's all right, though, because I've got a job at the factory. Let's find the boot. There. We'll put your address. Well, I haven't got one. Well, that, that's, that's why I want a room. <laughs> <laughs> Your previous one, then. Anything wrong? I told you to get out of sleep. 
You're too late now. Train's gone. Is there another hotel? There's only one of everything it's Sleeth, and MacKillop owns the lot. Well, I've got to stay somewhere. I suppose I better start looking. Anyway, thanks for helping me up. Here, wait a minute. Better come with me. Oh, I uh, don't want to put you to any trouble. Come along. I've got a spare room. Not very fancy, but it's clean and I won't cheat you. Well? Something you ought to know about me. I've been in jail. Then you'll feel right at home in Sleeth. Come along, we'll go and get your bag. Now, I don't want to. I feel I'm causing you and your family a lot of trouble. Don't worry, there's only me and my daughter. No, I'll better get her. So late, Dad. Hello, Mr. Cooper. Hello. This is my daughter. I've asked him to lodge with us, but he doesn't want to. Well, um, Mr. Foster, I've, um... I've changed my mind. Well, come in, Mr. Cooper. Idiot! 
I'm very sorry, Mr. McKillop. He's a new man. I'll sack him at once. You've ruined a whole morning's work. You're sacked. Get your cards. Oh, well, uh, just getting me oil can. You heard me. Get your cards. At once. Just a moment, Jackson. You say it's his first day here? Yes, sir. We all make mistakes, don't we? I think he ought to be given another chance. That would only be the fair thing to do. It's always been my policy to deal fairly with my employees. Thank you, Mr. McKillop. Thank you. Just see it doesn't happen again. Oh, it won't, I promise. It was an accident. It won't happen again. Clumsy ass. <sighs> Sorry, sir. Come along, Ashton. Really, McKillop, no wonder you're in trouble employing incompetence like that. Why on earth didn't you sack him? Goodwill, Ashton. We'll need all the goodwill we can find in the next few days, particularly tonight. Mm, especially tonight. Hmm. You better start. Yes, yes, don't rush me. Ashton, the stock is sure. I can't get into trouble, can I? I mean, it is legal, isn't it? Perfectly legal, I saw you. Don't worry. Our firm doesn't guarantee to get you into heaven, but at least we'll keep you out of jail. Come along now. Well, let's get it over with. Ladies and gentlemen, I won't mince matters. We must face the fact that your town is dying. We'll be late for the meeting, Mr. Cooper. Ready. Well, isn't he coming? Well, don't you want to see Sleeth grow? What for? If you were twice as big, it'd be twice as bad. If I had my way, I'd blow it up, wipe it off the face of the earth. All right, Dad, we've had all that before. That's enough now. But if you don't like it, why do you stay here? Same reason everybody else stays here. Can't afford to get out. Come on, Mr. Cooper. Oh, Mr. Foster, you sure you won't come? To listen to that big bag of wind, McKillop. I know exactly what he'll say. What? I have only the best interests of sleep at heart. Hmm? The interests of sleep are your interests. <laughs> He's out. Prosperity for sleep means prosperity for all. Prosperity for sleep means prosperity for all. For you, and you, and you. Prosperity for all. Sleeve must expand or die. Which is it to be? Faced with such a choice, there can only be one answer. I'll tell you the answer. There's no use flogging a dead horse. It is. That's right. Flogging a dead horse. Ah, if he said it, it should be buried. Yeah, that's what I hear. I quite agree, my friend. Why not replace a dead horse with a healthy, energetic one? That's the object of the Sleeth Three Development Corporation. I personally have invested substantially in this venture, but we must have the backing of certain financial interests in London. My colleague, Mr. Ashton, and the syndicate which he represents, has faith in the future of your town. They are prepared to invest heavily in its redevelopment if the people of Sleet are behind this project 100%. But I must impress on you the fact that if we are to succeed, we must have the support of every investor, large and small. Tomorrow morning, a large block of shares will be offered to the general public. I am confident that you, the ordinary people of Sleeth, will welcome this opportunity to share in the future prosperity of your town with unbounded enthusiasm. But surely you want new factories in Sleeth? For your benefit! Why well, don't you get something about the old factories first? There they are. I was coming to there. Reluctant as I am to do so, I may be forced to shut down the mill. You can't! That's what you have to work with all the factories out! Yes! 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 Yes!
salvation lies in the success of the Sleet Redevelopment Corporation. Now that you realize the urgency of the situation, I am confident you will give this project your approval by investing your savings down to the last penny. Well, aren't you going to do anything? Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Offering you the only chance to save yourselves and... And you won't take it. You haven't got enough faith in your own town or your own future. Nobody's got a future in this town. <laughs> oh, don't talk nonsense. What about him? Why don't you think about his future and all the other little kids like him? Surely he's got a right to grow up strong and healthy in a prosperous town, hasn't he? I may be new here, but I've got faith in this town, and I've got faith in Mr. McKillop, too. And I'm going to prove it now by investing in this... this little boy's future. In here, I've got every penny I've earned in the last five years, and believe me, it was hard labour. There you are, Mr. McKillop. I want to invest my life savings. Four pounds, seven and sixpence. He, he wants to give the money to Mr. McKillop himself. <laughs> well, Mr. McKillop. <laughs> He's got faith in this town. And if you had any sense, you'd have faith as well. If he can do it, so can we. He's right. It's our only chance. Young man, it has taken a stranger in our midst to open our eyes. Sleeth will be everlastingly grateful to you. to this. Enthusiastic response to redevelopment scheme. City Syndicate offers full backing. Price of shares rising. <laughs> I've done it, Ashton. You mean I've done it? Uh, we've both done it. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, you know, neither of us would have done it if it hadn't been for that simpleton. What's his name? Uh, Cooper, I believe. We should be grateful to him. Yes, and we must show our gratitude in concrete fashion. We may need his help again. Sorry. Young man. Well, hello, Mr. McKillop. And how do you like being promoted to the fourth floor? Oh, very grateful, sir. I'm grateful to you for the support you gave me last night. I hope you make a handsome profit. Oh, I didn't want to make a profit any more than you did, Mr. McKillop. It's for the good of the town. Yes, yes. Well, good night. Uh, Mr. McKillop! Well, what is it now? Uh, is it all right if I do your office now, sir? Certainly. Good night. Well, Mr. McKillop! Well, what is it now? Uh, could I have... Um...
Oh, that's a tedious journey from London. Look, can it leave those papers? Here they are. Ah, oh, right. thank you. I'll check them now. Oh, no. But I might have been killed. Just look at me. I'm soaked to the skin with all this filthy water. I shall have to go and change. Hand me that bag, will you? I'd like to lay my hands on the idiots who left their tail there. Weak of disinfectant. Well, it's a good job McKillop's got a shower. Thank you. I'll take it. Hello? Morley? Ashton's busy at the moment. This is Collins. 79? Are you sure? Good. Very good indeed. <laughs> yes, yes, I'll tell him at once. That was Morley. Oh? Oh, well. What did he have to say? Good news. Good news? When the market opens tomorrow morning, the shares will be quoted at 79. 79, eh? We didn't expect them to reach that for at least a week. <laughs> We'll be able to sell sooner than we expected. How high do you think they'll go? A hundred? High as that? Might be even higher. A hundred and ten? A hundred and twenty? A hundred and thirty? The sky's the limit. But I'll settle at anything over a hundred. Dum 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 Ah, 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 and uh, congratulations on the shares. What? Fancy them going up to 79. Some of the people were saying they'd never go up. <laughs> you just wait till I tell them. No, no. Uh, you, you, you mustn't do that. Why not? You're going to sell if they reach 100. So if everybody sells their shares, they'll all make a profit. No, no, it doesn't work that way. If, uh, if everybody sells, then, then the shares go down. Oh, I see. Now, look, I tell you what. If you could fart about this, I'll, I'll let you have a couple of my shares. Then when the time's ripe, I'll let you know when to sell. That means we make a packet and everybody else is in trouble, eh? <laughs> That's the stock market. <laughs> you catch on quickly. But you must keep mum. <laughs> can I rely on you? Oh, yes, sir. You can rely on me. I, uh, better get back to work now. Yes? Uh, it's Cooper, sir. Who do you say? Cooper. Cooper? Cooper? Oh, yes, I remember. Uh, what is it, Cooper? There's something I've got to tell you. Ashton is a crook. Ashton's a crook, is he? I see. Have you told anyone else about this, Cooper? No. I've had my suspicions about Ashton. Are you still in my office, Cooper? Yes, sir. Good. Hold on. Here they come. Just hold on a minute, Cooper. Please? Uh, Inspector, this is the mayor. 
I have reason to believe that my safe in the factory is being robbed. Thank you. Cooper, now listen carefully to me and do exactly as I say. Yes, sir. Safe behind the picture. Take out the brown envelope and bring it straight to me here. Take the brown envelope, bring it to you. Oh, don't worry, you can count on me, sir. Hello, Mr. McKillop, what was the combination then? Hello? Hello? Oh. Well, I just have to do it the easy way. There's a good chap. Don't give any trouble. You think I... You don't understand. I was just getting something from Mr. McKillop. This envelope contains evidence that's going to send a crook to prison. It certainly will. You're making such a mistake. You better phone Mr. McKillop. Oh, here he is now. Here you are, Mr. McKillop. I've got it. Caught you in the act, eh? Good work, Sergeant. But you told me to get this... I up. told you to rob my safe. A somewhat feeble-minded alibi, wouldn't you say, Inspector? But you said... You know what? He's a crook! So this is a thanks I get for giving a hardened criminal a second chance. Shakes one's faith in human nature. You'll never get away with this! <laughs> I've been framed. I found something out. McKillop is a crook. I've known that for 30 years. Sit down and have a cup of tea. It's all a big swindle. I, I heard him talking. You've got to get away. If you stay here, you'll just end up in prison. That's a good idea. At least I'd be safe there, wouldn't I? Don't be a fool, Davy. Quick, the back way. Take my bike. Wait a minute. We've got to stop McKillop. The only way to stop McKillop is to blow this miserable town of his sky eye. I'm beginning to think you're right, Dad. Davy, please go while you have a chance. All right, I'll go, but I'll be back. I'll get even with McKillop if it's the last thing I do. Go on. Where is he? You know he's here somewhere. You realize there are serious penalties for harboring a criminal? In that case, you'd better get out of here. Try right upstairs. I'll tell you he's not here. Huh? Oh, there's Cooper! Come there, you missed him! Ah! Right, man!
So you're through with a straight and narrow. Don't ever mention straight and narrow to me again. From now on, I'm going to be just as crooked as honest people are. Delighted. Glad to hear you perform. Let's have a drink and we'll get down to business. What are you doing back in this old dump? Oh, Davy boy, I won't try to hide the fact that fortune hasn't exactly smiled on us since you left. Quite frankly, we, we can't do without you. Here, here. You wait and hear about all the jobs we got lined up for you. I'm prepared to do anything, but first you've got to help me to do a job. Anything, Davy boy. We're partners again, aren't we? Yeah, well, that depends. Now, what kind of job did you have in mind? Jewelry? No. Furs? It's furs. Cash? No. This is a bit out of the usual run. Huh? What's this? Sleaf, three development shaft skyrocket. Further jump forecast. It's quite a neat swindle. How did you know? Oh, used to be my old racket, Davy boy, before I changed to a more direct approach. Believe me, there's more money in safe cracking. But they've swindled a whole town. They're going to make a fortune unless we swindle them the same way they've swindled everyone else. Aha, uh -huh. now you're thinking big, Davy. And then when we swindle them out of every penny they've got... Yeah? We'll give it all back to the people. Hark at Robin Hood. He's turning honest again. Are you, Davy? Only temporary. You're asking the impossible, Davy. All right, then. If you don't help me, I don't help you. No, 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 Davy. Davy, I didn't say I wouldn't help you. Oh, this is going to require a great deal of thought. And money. Well, here's £3,825 to start with. Hello. <laughs> ah, it's good work, Davy. But hardly enough for a takeover bid. Ah, what we must do is to find some way to establish ourselves as a group whose credit is unimpeachable, with unlimited financial resources, whose honesty and integrity is beyond question. Yeah, well, that's the impossible, that is. But you're the kind of man who finds the impossible and... Irresistible challenge. Here, here. All we have to do is to find out what kind of people fit these specifications. Of course. <laughs> Simple. Afternoon. Oh, good afternoon, sir. I'd like to know just how many rooms you have. Uh, we have 20, sir. I reckon that'll have to do. Oh, I'm afraid only 10 of them are vacant. I guess the men are just have to rub it, Major. Uh, anything wrong? Uh, oh, no, sir. Excuse me. It's just I had the feeling I'd seen you somewhere before. Uh, Time magazine. Oh, uh -huh. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Would you like to uh, sign the register, sir? Why, certainly. General Perkins and staff. Uh, nationality, sir. I'm afraid I'm going to have to leave that blank. For security reasons, we are here incognito. Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> What's in there? Uh, the lounge, sir. Fine. Just fine. This'll have to be my office, Major. Yes, General. Uh, where's this shop go, Gov? Right in here. And watch that accent. Major. General. Will you see the men are assigned to their quarters? Very good, General. Sergeant, go check the rooms. Major. Yes, General. Professor. Yeah, I'm in here, General. General. Are you still here? You may go. 
Very good, sir. We'll never get away with it, adult. It's worked so far, isn't it? I don't know if I can keep it up. You're doing fine, Davy. I bet the manager's on the phone right now. I'm not joking, Mr. McKillop. Ah, that's right. The American Army. Oh, they're being very secretive. But I've managed to find out who they are. Rocket missiles. Ah, that's right. <laughs> I think you better come right over, sir. All we have to do now is wait. He's here. He recognized me. Not in that uniform. Hat! Where's my hat? No. Glasses. Where are my glasses? Now calm down, Davy. I can't find my glasses. Thank you. He's taken over the lounge. <laughs> he has, has he? What do you say his name is? Perkins? Ah, oh, that's right. General Perkins. A very big man in missiles. You must have read about him in Time magazine. Time magazine? Ah, oh, that's right. Yes, I believe I did. Watch it, though. You know, this is a private room. I don't know who you are, sir. But I know who you are. Oh, yes, and I know why you're here, too. I wasn't born yesterday, you know. So shall we have a chat about this rocket base, General Perkins? Now, however did you find out? Well, I read Time magazine, too, you know. <laughs> well, pretty sharp, Mr. Uh... Uh, uh, McKillop. <laughs> Mr. McKillop? I guess I might just as well lay my cards right on the table. Go ahead, General. I'm listening. This one works. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we get down to business? Major. Professor. Now then, Mr. McKillop. Very odd. You remind me of someone. Um, uh, uh, General, you, uh, you have an appointment, sir? I'm sorry, General. I'm at your disposal. Now then. You see that? It's a map of sleep. Yep. I understand you're the mayor here. Yes, that is so. And you own a good bed of this here town. That's right. The bed's marked in pencil there. That's right. All those beds, why, we want to buy them. All of them? Professor, now, you are sure this is the only spot for the launch inside? Yeah, I heard you know that. According to my calculations, the direction of the rocket D with the velocity V and an energy equal to whoa, one million... Whoa, hold it, Professor. I intend to leave all that scientific stuff to you. My job is to set up this rocket base. Now, if you say we need the whole square, then we'll have to have it. Yeah, the whole square. Not only that, but the whole area around it. We'll have to get all the people out before they start demolition. But that's almost the entire town. Sir, I don't intend to haggle over the price. It'll cost a fortune buying this property. Acquiring the leases, paying people off to move. You're the mayor, so I can tell you this in straight confidence. I'm authorized to bid as high as uh, a million. A million dollars? Pounds, sir. Pounds, did you say? Sir, I did not say peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> I was mayor of this here town. It's up to you to expedite this matter. Evacuate the area, arrange for the transfer of the title deeds, and so on and so forth. Uh, certainly, certainly, General. A busy man like you doesn't want to negotiate with every Tom, Dick, and Harry. Leave everything to me. <laughs> fine, fine. Naturally, we have to acquire the control and interest in the Sleeve Three Development Corporation, uh, buy up all the shares. Uh, uh, naturally. Mm. 
There are just one or two questions. Uh, General, I... you're a call to Washington, sir. Uh, Washington? Yeah, yeah, that's right. I almost forgot. Uh, would you excuse me, Mr. McKellar? Uh, uh, certainly, General. I, I'll get working on this thing right away. My questions are of no importance. I can't help feeling that we've met before somewhere. Uh, you can? I can't. Uh, the the uh, Ed Morrow show, maybe? No, no. It was right here. Why, you... You... Well, that's ridiculous. It couldn't be. <laughs> good day, General. Uh, good day to you, sir. <laughs> Do you think he fell for it? If he hadn't, my lad, you'd be back in clink by now. <laughs> <laughs> General. He's no general, he's only a captain. How do you know? He's too small to be a general. Good afternoon, ma'am. <laughs> now, how did you recognize me? Oh, Davy, you surely don't think you could pull anyone in that get up, do you? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I've been doing mighty fine so far, that is. You've been called up, son. Dad, that's an American uniform, an officer's uniform. You're a captain? Ah, sir, I am a general. You're out of your mind. I said I'd be back to get even with McKillop. Well, this was the only way I could do it. But, Davy, listen. You've got to trust me. I know what I'm doing. But what can you do? Well, I couldn't do anything alone, I know that. But I've got the backing of the richest country in the world, the United States of America. Mind you, they don't know yet. Whatever you're up to, I'm not going to let it's you get... It's too late now. It's already been done. But I need your help. You can count on me, General. Good. Now, listen. McKillop is going to try to buy back all those shares of the Sleeth Redevelopment Corporation. He'll pay twice what they're worth. So you spread the word, see? You leave it to me. Tonight, I'll make the round of every pub in Sleeth. You do that every night. Davy, do be sensible. Please, you must trust me. If they hold out for a few days, they'll have enough money to get out of this miserable town. Why don't you declare war on us, General? Then you could blow the town up. Oh, give anything to see that. <laughs> maybe you will. Yeah, I guess maybe you will out there, Grandpa. Here he comes. Still say it's only a captain. Go on, he's no captain. He's, he's too small for a captain. If you don't shut your gob, I'll give you a clip round the ear hole. Do they speak good for a yank? Yes, I'll meet your price. I want the entire southwest corner. Have the deed of sale drawn up immediately. Look at that. Still queuing to sell their shares. Three days running. I hope this cost my killer every penny he's got. It will. Yeah. Couldn't go wrong, could it? Don't worry, David. When Adolf Carter plans an operation, he leaves nothing to chance. You planned that operation in the hospital, didn't you? <laughs> well, now, what's the matter with you? Nothing. Yeah, well, I was in this pub, see. You were told to stay out of pubs. Well, me and the other fellas, we took the jeep over to the next town. Well? Well, I was sitting having a quiet pint, minding my own business, and these two American GIs came in. Americans? Well, they're stationed at some airfield. You idiot. Well, I didn't start it. They come over to me, and one of them says, hi, pal. Well, naturally, I says, hi, pal. And then they started to make fun of the way I talk. And this other bloke, he says, I know where you come from. You come from Brooklyn. And this first bloke, he says, well, we're from Texas, and we don't like jerks from Brooklyn. That was it. Jerks from Brooklyn. Raven lunatic, you're from Bermondsey. Oh, yeah, I... Yeah, well, I got carried away in the heat of the moment, you see, and then the next thing I knew, we were rolling all over the floor and these two MPs came in. MPs? That's darn it. No, it's all right. I got out the back door. We're in the clear. Are you quite sure? You don't think for a moment that we...
We're in trouble. Pull yourself together. We'll be arrested. We're not in the American army. Then we'll be shot as spies. Come on, let's get out of here. No. Our only chance is to brazen this out. You and you, go. He's a real American general. We'll never fool them. Now, you keep quiet. I'll do the talking. Harry, but... Come in. General Cummings in command of Northeast Sector, Area B. Won't you sit down, sir? No, thanks. Who are you? Uh, a, a Major Horton in charge of security and public relations on special assignment, sir. Hmm. General, one of your men... Well, has... Yes, sir, we already have a report on that incident, sir. You are taking it very calmly. I will not tolerate brawling in my command. My policy has always been to maintain goodwill. In a few days, I am flying to Washington to attend a general staff meeting on that very subject. I will not have this incident on my record. I demand you accept full responsibility. Perhaps you'd better ask whom you're talking to, General. I don't care. Well, who are you, General? Sorry, I'm afraid the general can't answer that. What are you doing here? Sorry, but we can't answer that either. Just a minute, Major. I address my question to the general. Let him speak for himself. This is my command area. I have every right to know who you are and what you are doing here. Don't you ever read Time magazine, sir? Time magazine? Yeah, Time magazine. No, I... Then however do you expect to keep in touch, sir? Major, there's only one way to settle this. I guess you better call Washington. Washington? Yep, the White House. Yeah, on the uh, private wire. <coughs> now, uh, General! Go ahead, Major. Uh, yes, sir, I'm just looking up the numbers, sir. Come on, now, General, there's no need to drag Washington into this, a harmless fist fight. Why don't we just uh, shake hands all around and forget the whole thing? Just this time. My sincere apologies, General... Uh, Perkins, sir. Perkins? If there's anything I can do to assist you on your mission, General... Well, now, uh, as a matter of fact, there is... Uh, it's very important that I have some explosives and supplies in a hurry. Just you name it, and it's yours. Colonel, you'll establish liaison with Major Horton here. And any requisitions made by General Perkins shall be delivered without delay. Yes, sir. Good luck, General. Yeah. Call yourself a public relations officer, Elmer? You never get my picture in Time magazine. But, Harry, you're not in command of a rocket base. General Perkins is. Yeah. They all seem happy enough to be getting out of town. There's loyalty for you. As soon as they've got some money, they're off. If I hadn't bought back those shares, Made a fortune out of them, they did. So did you, Mr. McKillop. So I did. These are all there, General. You going to check them? No. We can't trust each other at their stage of the game. Why? Oh, of course. <laughs> Anything wrong? Oh, no. Uh, would you excuse me, Mr. McKillop? <laughs> Certainly. I tell you, he knows what he's doing. But don't you realize he's going to blow up the town? Well, it's time somebody did it. What are you doing here? I told you to take it away from Sleeth. She won't go. Davy, you're not really going to go through with this crazy idea, are you? Well, I can't stop now. I'm not going to let you do it. I'm going to go in there and tell McKillop. Wait, tell him. Now, be reasonable. Reasonable? You're going to destroy hundreds of thousands of pounds worth of property. But it's not mine. But don't you... You see? must trust me. Please, Ellen. I'm going to go in there and tell McKillop. Now, wait. You can't... What am I going to do with her? Place her under arrest, General. Dear, dear. He's no general. I'm afraid I shall have to, Ellen. Place. Ah. And treat her gently. Well, General, shall we sign the documents? I'm ready when you are, sir. 
If and it's okay with you, I'd like to start demolition as soon as possible, Mr. McKellar. The sooner, the better. Yep. General. Mr. McKellar, sir. The whole area is completely cleared. It's all yours, General. God, blimey. What did you say? Ah, uh, gosh. <laughs> oh, now. <laughs> Watch it. <laughs> Why, you almost blew the whole thing up. Did I? I was only kidding. Everything's under control. When does the actual demolition begin? Right away. I've set up my control base in the rotunda at the end of the pier. We show to be safe there. We? Oh, perhaps I'd better not. Oh, now, Mr. McKillop, come on. After all, it is your town. Remember Seasleaf Grove? Well, now, you can see it go. <laughs> Take your last look at it, Mr. McKillop. Everything's ready, General. That's good. And you're certain we're safe here? Half a mile of water separates us from the actual scene of the operation, sir. These cables? Lead uh, from the buildings in the town to the detonator switches on the panel right here. Just a touch of that button, the town hall, sky high. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. Now, you're no going back out, are you, sir? Well, no, but... Uh... Go ahead. Major, go ahead. Very good, sir. Go ahead, Sergeant. Ready? Ready. Ready. Ready, sir. I reckon we'll start with... Uh... You choose, sir. Let's begin with something small. Well, how about the public... Uh... The gentlemen's? Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Ladies first, sir. <laughs> <laughs> now the James. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we do the town hall now, sir? No, no, the library. It's falling down anyway. <laughs> it's my turn. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I wanted to do that myself. Oh, now, don't be a baby. Town hall. <laughs> <laughs> we are safe, aren't we? Of course. <laughs> now, now, your turn. A factory. Oh, Mr. McKellar, why, I can't blow up your factory. It's your factory now. <laughs> <laughs> Very well.
trained in the best army in the world. <laughs> General, just a few details. General, the professor must speak to you at once, sir. Would you excuse me, Mr. McCaleb? These scientists always bringing up problems. Yep, yeah, professor, what can I do for you? General, my calculations. It's a mistake. May a stake? Mistake? It's the wrong direction. The wrong direction? What's wrong? What is it? It faces north. Then we just can't use it. Can't use what? All this. Now the buildings are down. Why, it's obvious. The town faces north. But it always did. Ah, then you should have pointed Dad out to us before, sir. Well, back to the drawing board. But what about my money? We have a contract. We'll have to exercise the cancellation clause, sir. But there is no cancellation clause. Well, should be. Just a typographical error, I suppose. What about my money? My town? You won't get away with this! I'm going to report you to your civilians! I'm going Washington! You hear me? I'm going to go Washington! As you all know, I visited 24 countries in nine days. And the purpose of that trip was to check up on our policy of goodwill. And we must redouble our efforts to maintain, I said, no calls. Uh, this is urgent, sir. The British ambassador. Uh, these diplomats. <laughs> well, at least this is a friendly one. Good morning, Mr. Ambassador. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, if, if you just... We did what? We couldn't have. Oh, no, Mr. Ambassador, I'm not calling you a liar. It's... The whole town? General Perkins? Uh, hold, hold on a minute, please. Have any of you ever heard of a General Perkins? General Perkins? General Perkins? Did somebody say General Perkins? You know him, Cummings? Why, yes, he's a great friend of mine. He's in my command area. <laughs> and, I may add, I gave him every assistance on his recent mission. You were aware of the nature of General Perkins' mission? Well, uh, I read Time magazine, sir. Did he hit the moon? General Perkins has just blown up an entire English town. On purpose? That's not very friendly. And you helped him blow it up. I? What? I didn't know anything about it. Do you mean to tell me your troops did this without orders? No, sir. My troops are well disciplined. They don't act without orders. No, sir. Then you are responsible. Well, I... Well, it certainly looks that way. Yes, Mr. Ambassador. No, no, I was merely checking the facts. No, Mr. Ambassador, we accept full responsibility, and I assure you, sir, full reparation will be made immediately. I will authorize an appropriation of one million... three million... five million dollars. And we'll rebuild the town from top to bottom. Goodbye, sir. 
That, gentlemen, is goodwill. And today, this magnificent new town, so aptly named Goodwill, stands as a symbol of the generosity of our American cousins. <laughs> but above all, it stands as a tribute to the prophetic vision of your benefactor. We've got a grand town here, Mr. McKillop. Now, don't mess about with it. Davy, you ought to know me better by now. I've only the best interests of sleep at heart. Of course. Days, they're sure to kick me out. When you get out, you come back to sleep. Do you really mean that? Promise you'll come back. I'd like to see anybody stop me. Well, take care of yourself, Ellen. I will. Davy, aren't you going to 